1927, when Charles Lindbergh planned his epic-making flight to Paris in his Ryan monoplane, the Spirit of St. Louis, the best available navigational aids included only the Earth indicator compass, a magnetic compass, and an altimeter. Wind drift was determined by visual contact with the ground, noting the motion of wind across forests, plains, or water. Accuracy depended solely on the individual capabilities of the pilot. Today's radar-guided aircraft are making Atlantic flights on a routine basis with greatly accelerated speeds at considerably higher altitudes. The conditions, coupled with increasingly crowded airspace, make aircraft all-weather navigational control requirements a more exacting necessity. Providing this precision in all types of aircraft and helicopters, Ryan-designed sub-miniature Doppler processing circuits have been developed into these small, lightweight, representative units. Ryan is the world's largest producer of continuous wave Doppler navigation systems and the only company that has Doppler navigators in production for helicopters today. Thousands of these units are on order and involve applications in more than 25 types of aircraft. Certain characteristics are common to all Ryan Airborne navigation equipment. The most important of these is the utilization of pure continuous wave Doppler techniques. Pure CW is the most efficient and versatile approach to Doppler navigation. It does not exhibit altitude holds, insensitivity at high altitudes, or inadequate performance over smooth seas and deserts. Also, CW permits operation at zero altitude. The continuous wave energy generated by this navigation equipment is concentrated into narrow beams of radiation directed toward the ground. Energy is transmitted along each beam at frequency FT. The terrain reflects a portion of the energy back into the antenna at frequency FR. With beams directed aft, the frequency of the reflected energy is lower than the frequency of the transmitted energy because of the component of aircraft velocity relative to the ground in the direction of the beam axis. Due to the finite beam width, the frequency difference between FT and FR actually is a spectrum. It lies in the audio frequency band, and the center frequency of the spectrum is proportional to the aircraft's ground speed. The higher the aircraft's speed, the greater the frequency difference. This frequency shift phenomenon is known as the Doppler effect. It is the basic principle used in Ryan Doppler equipment to measure the speed of an aircraft. With one beam, only one component of the aircraft's speed can be measured, but with two or more beams, it is possible to measure the aircraft's heading speed, drift speed, ground speed, and drift angle. Portions of this data are available for display to the pilot and for further processing in additional data displays. Typical data processing and signal flow can be demonstrated graphically. The power supply provides high voltage to the Klystron transmitting tube. The signal generated by the Klystron is radiated by the antenna to the ground. Reflected energy is detected by the crystal mixers and fed to an amplifier assembly. The audio signals are amplified and supplied to a signal data converter which generates analog voltages proportional to the port and starboard velocity. These voltages are fed to a ground speed computer and resolved into voltages proportional to the heading and drift velocity. These outputs are available for tie-in with accurate Ryan navigational computers and indicators or other computing equipment, thus providing a complete navigation system. In some Ryan navigation systems, Heading and drift velocities are applied to a drift angle and ground speed indicator for electrical output and visual display. This indicator's outputs may be used for tie-in with radar mapping equipment and other sensors. Exemplifying this is a plotting board with a predetermined course overlay. A pilot may fly any course and visually follow his aircraft's position and ground track. This combination can be used to facilitate search patterns and station keeping. In addition to these applications, continuous wave Doppler radar can supply the inputs to other plotting boards with map overlays to give a pictorial identification of the aircraft's present position relative to a base or destination. This all-weather and all-terrain capability 
is of prime importance in conditions where line of flight must be maintained within close tolerances. In these helicopter applications, Ryan Doppler systems can automatically detect motion or induce or prohibit motion over the ground or water. This capability is particularly essential to the helicopter which must make repeated manual or automatic transitions. A continuous indication of these cruise to hover aircraft velocities is displayed to the pilot. Through all these modes, Doppler velocity inputs can be coupled with automatic stabilization equipment and an absolute altimeter to provide day or night all weather operation. This combination also permits accurate automatic control and operation within close proximity to the Earth's surface. For all types of fixed-wing aircraft, these versatile Doppler systems automatically and continuously compute and display ground velocity and other navigational data over sea and land without the aid of ground stations, wind estimates, or true airspeed information. The inclusion of a navigational computer provides output for tie-in with position, course, and distance computing equipment, inertial navigation equipment, and terrain clearance radar. The Doppler's high sensitivity permits operation over a wide range of aircraft drift, pitch, and roll angles with no attitude hold. Ryan's self-contained Doppler equipment provide all-weather navigation, high performance over smooth seas, all-terrain zero-altitude operation, stabilized hovering control, and they meet the altitude and speed requirements of modern aircraft and drones. Instruments, airframes, and weapons have changed a lot during the short span of aviation history. Line-of-sight manual firing of weapons modified to air-to-air -air and air-to-ground use has given place to the automatic discovery, search, lock-on, and hit of this electronic age. Modern weapons demand an exacting, elusive target to prove defense capabilities. The Ryan Q2C Fire Bee is the most adaptable jet-powered target drone system in use for training by the United States Navy and Air Force today. The past several years, which have seen the development of today's missile inventory, have witnessed the parallel evolution of the Fire Bee target system which has anticipated the requirements of more sophisticated and efficient weapons. The military need to service the newer weapon systems with a higher performance, more versatile target, introduced this newer, improved version of the Fire Bee family, the Q2C. On-station endurance is a major factor of efficient target performance, since this determines the number of presentations or missile firings that may be accomplished on each flight. The Q2C has accomplished a maximum altitude of 59,800 feet and a maximum endurance of 97 minutes, of which 77 minutes were above 50,000 feet. Maximum speed attained has been Mach 0.96 at 51,000 feet. Specification performance requirements are consistently being exceeded in all categories. Radar augmentation in the X, C, L, and S frequency bands is provided by traveling wave tube amplifiers. Using this augmentation, the radar reflectivity of the Q2C can be increased to simulate a bomber-sized threat to air defense radar operators. Provisions have been included for the installation of radar tracking beacons, which give positive target identification. The Q2C is recovered by parachutes. The cycle is initiated in various ways, dependent on target altitude and circumstances. Included is a power-off glide phase, which is initiated after fuel depletion. The target will remain in glide until recovery is commanded. It will also recover automatically if battery voltage drops below a preset level. Glide phase permits the fire bee to be returned to a predetermined area favorable to retrieval. After the target touches down on land or water, the parachute is automatically released to prevent damage by dragging. Retrieval is accomplished by helicopter, boat or truck, and the Q2C is returned to base for repair and reuse. B-26s, P2Bs, or GC-130 air launches, or zero-length ground launches, fulfill launch requirements for all missions, ranging from low-level evaluation 
to high altitude operations in which multiple presentations per mission demand maximum time on station. Because of a basic Ryan philosophy, that the original concept of any system must contain growth potential, as increasingly efficient aerial weapons demand a high performance target, there will always be a fire beam ready for any mission assigned.